Hello and welcome to the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you major news developments from across the world. Our headlines Israel and the United States agree to normalize ties. The deal has been termed a betrayal by Palestinians. The Lebanese parliament approves state of emergency. The army is granted special powers. The United States claims seizure of Iranian oil cargoes for Venezuela. Iran contests claim. In a special feature, we look at Kamala Harris' contentious history as a prosecutor and the police set fire to the MST camp during eviction in Brazil. Now, first story, Palestinians have responded harshly to the announcement of a deal between Israel and the United Arab Emirates. The Palestinian Liberation Organization issued a formal statement on Thursday condemning the UAE-Israel deal. They stated that the deal is a betrayal to Jerusalem, the Al-Aqsa Mosque and the Palestinian cause. Earlier in the day, President Donald Trump announced the deal which will lead to full normalization of relations between UAE and Israel. He called it a huge breakthrough. The US had mediated the signing of the deal. Now, under the deal, Israel has supposedly agreed to delay its proposed annexation of parts of the occupied West Bank. This was announced in May this year. And this is in return for comprehensive trade and diplomatic relations with the UAE. However, hours after the agreement was announced by Trump, Benjamin Netanyahu, that's Israel's Prime Minister, reiterated in a television broadcast that the plan to annex the West Bank territories remains on table. After Wednesday's deal, UAE will become the first Gulf country and third Arab country to formally recognize Israel and normalize relations with it. Egypt was the first Arab country to do so with the Camp David Agreement in 1979. Jordan did so in 1994. The PLO accuses the deal of being in violation of the Arab Peace Initiative Agreement reached by all members of the Arab League in 2002, which was further endorsed in 2007 and 2017 by Arab summits. The Arab Peace Initiative sets a peaceful settlement of the Israel-Palestinian conflict as a precondition for any normalization of relations between its signatories and Israel. The PLO statement also asked the UAE to immediately withdraw from the deal. Hamas has called the deal a treacherous stab in the back. Saeb Arakat, the General Secretary of the PLO, asked the leadership of the League to initiate proceedings for the expulsion of the UAE. In our next story on Thursday, the Lebanese parliament approved a state of emergency that was imposed by the outgoing government a day after the deadly chemical explosion at Beirut on August 4th. Under the emergency approved on August 21st, the army has been granted wide-ranging powers. According to Lebanese law, an emergency lasting more than eight days has to get the approval of parliament. It will have to be renewed once again after August 21st. Under the state of emergency, the Lebanese army and other security personnel will be empowered to close down assembly points, declare curfew and prevent people from gathering. The media can also be censored from reporting. Lebanese protesters and human rights organizations have strongly denounced the parliament's decision. Protesters said that a political establishment is trying to curtail civil and political liberties and trying to cover up for the government's negligence and failure to prevent the explosion. In our next story, the United States claimed on Thursday that it had seized four tankers carrying Iranian oil to Venezuela. The seizure announcement was part of the intensification of U.S. sanctions against both Iran and Venezuela. However, Iran has contested the U.S. claims of seizure, with the Iranian ambassador to Venezuela saying that this is an attempted psychological warfare. These ships were targeted by federal prosecutors in the U.S. with a civil forfeiture case filed in Washington, D.C. on July 2nd. Prosecutors claimed the ships are carrying petrol cargo of 1.2 million tons. The prosecutors representing the Donald Trump administration claimed that a supposed oil shipment that was arranged by UK-based businessmen with alleged ties to the Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps, the IRGC. The IRGC, Iran's foremost paramilitary force, has been called a terrorist organization by Donald Trump administration. US authorities told Associated Press that the ships are yet to be physically confiscated and their whereabouts are being ascertained. But federal authorities have stated that the owners, captains and insurers of the ships will be asked to hand over them which has been deemed U.S. property or will face sanctions. In recent months, Iran transported over a million tons of petrol and a flotilla of food supplies to open a supermarket chain in Venezuela. Iran has also publicly promised to keep a steady supply of petrol and food supplies to the country. The increasing trade relations between the two nations against whom the U.S. has taken action has angered the Trump administration. In our next story, there has been a lot of celebrations in many circles over Democratic presidential candidate Joe Biden choosing Kamala Harris as his vice presidential candidate. However, the former Attorney General of California and a senator has a very problematic record as a prosecutor. We bring you a feature from Breakthrough News on this topic.
says she's proud of her record as a prosecutor and that she'll be a prosecutor president, but I'm deeply concerned about this record. There are too many examples to cite, but she put over 1,500 people in jail for marijuana violations and then laughed about it when she was asked if she ever smoked marijuana. She blocked evidence. She blocked evidence that would have freed an innocent man from death row until the courts forced her to do so. She kept people in prison beyond their sentences to use them as cheap labor for the state of California. And she fought to keep cash you, bail system in place. And finally, we go to Brazil where military police set fire to the Quilombo Campo Grande camp of the Landless Rural Workers Movement or the MST. This is located in the southeastern state of Minas Gerais. This is part of a continuing effort from the Brazilian authorities to evict the families that have been resisting this land reposition order. On Thursday morning, the Eduardo Galeano Popular School was also destroyed with a tractor. That's all we have time for today. We'll be back on Monday with more news developments from across the world. Until then, keep watching People's Dispatch. Yeah, cantar que vamos a triunfar